and I am going to go back and paint it. It's just when I was prepping it for today, I wanted to make sure this part was done. But um, so see that, that that's not such a pretty color. So I wanted to change that. And so I went ahead and I put on a primer coat and then I painted two coats of white with um, the Dixie Belle. But what we're going to use today, I'm not sure if you are familiar with them, but this is a maker studio. I will put a link in the comments when this is done, but look at how cute this heifer is. I'm going to show you how easy it is to use this. And, um, and you can, it can be used more than once as long as you clean it and you wash it. And this is a, this one is called country girl. And there's a, the cutest little, it's a ball jar and has three little stems, but you just put the flowers on top of them. It's darling, but we're just going to concentrate on the heifer today. <clears throat> how cute is she? We're going to put her on here. So let me get her out. Okay. So take my scissors. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out the part of the design that I want to use. I don't need to put all of it on here. These are self adhesive. So you don't have to worry about them sliding or moving whenever you put them in the spot you want to put them. And I'm going to, Cut that part off because I don't need that to transfer onto my lazy Susan. So we're going to put it just like this right in the middle. Um, I guess I could, I could put her down here and I could put some words, but I really, hey, Michaela. <laughs> um, but I, I really don't have any words for this. <clears throat> so for right now, I'm just going to put this on and we're going to be using the Maker Studio. This is chalk art. It's thicker and you, it just runs right through the stencil. You cannot mess it up. So let's do that. <clears throat> so what you do is you just kind of take it off the backing. And then you just put it right where you want it. And then you make sure it's Sticks down. Moo. <laughs> Are you calling me a heifer? <laughs> All right. And <clears throat> now there are certain areas here that are kind of close to the edge. So I could take blue tape and I could tape those edges. And knowing myself, and I'm kind of a sloppy crafter, I'm going to go ahead and just tape it up now because I don't have to worry about it later. But making a mess. And if I do make a mess, I can always take the white chalk paint and go over it. There we go. And I'm going to have to get down here by the flower, too. It's not really easy to uh, tear tape when you have gloves on. But there we go. Okay, so when you're applying the chalk, chalk art, you can do it with like a rubber squeegee. Um, you can do it with an old credit card. Um, sometimes I use the IOD transfer tool. Just depends on what you have handy or what you like to use. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use an old credit card. That way I can just simply go down my whole design. If I wanted to do like the bow in red, the flower in pink, you know, the nose black and him all brown, I could use my little squeegee. I can just do certain parts. <clears throat> but, and I do have all the colors, but I... I, I, I just want this one to be all black or excuse me, all brown. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of the chalk art and the chalk art's thick, but a little goes a long way. I probably have too much, but let's see. I'll put some of this back. A little goes a long way. And let me show you. So when you take your credit card, you simply just press and drag down and it gets right into the little design. What makes this so nice about it not bleeding through or not getting any smearing underneath <clears throat> is because it's a mesh mesh stencil. So it's pretty, pretty impressive. Does a good job. Can you make a mistake? Absolutely. <clears throat> but if generally you, Generally, you don't because as long as your stencil is down good, you won't have an issue. <clears throat> All 
All right. I'm trying to be very careful because I don't want to get any brown. It looks like I already splattered some. Nope. Splattered some right there, but I, I'll touch that up with a little bit of white chalk paint. Oh, now it sounds like my lawn guy is outside. <laughs> Hopefully you can't hear too much of it because I have the microphone on, which generally blocks out a lot of the background noise. All right. Look at my glasses, because I want to make sure that I don't miss any part of it, any part of the design. Okay, so then I just want to go back and make sure I get any excess off. I don't want it pooled up or puddled up, so I'm just going to kind of make sure I have a nice even coat everywhere. Okay, that looks good. Now what I do is you just lift it off. <clears throat> I always get nervous because I've done this before where it didn't work because I was doing it on um, a ceramic piece, a plate, and on certain ceramics because some kind of topping, it doesn't adhere. So <laughs> I always peek first. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Here we go. Ready? Oh, thanks, Cheryl. Thanks, Michaela. I'm glad. I can certainly hear them. But whoa, look how adorable. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. Let me get this blue tape off. Now, I can reuse this stencil. All I need to do is rinse it with water. And if I let it sit too long, a little bit of soap and water and it's fine, you can use it again. But look how darling. Now I did get a little bit of brown right here, but I'm going to wait till that dries and then just touch it up with some white chalk paint. Now this does need more um, because just this little cute heifer design is, it's cute, but it still needs more. It's lifted. So what we're going to do um, I'll probably come back on either later tonight because I have some free time tonight or I might come on tomorrow. And what I, my plan is, is I'm going to use the Pentart pouring medium and maybe use um, some glitter and maybe some of the inks. I don't know. I don't really want to cover her up. But if I just tint it just a tad, that might be cute. Um, but definitely I'm going to pour this pouring medium. This pouring medium is really good for when you do paint pours. But this will also protect and give it a nice coating. Um, and I might just throw some glitter around the sides. I might decide that I want to paint the edges. I don't know yet. But definitely I know I just need to let this dry for a little bit. But I wanted to get it started with you guys. But isn't it darling? And you see how easy that is? And I didn't. There is no mistake because it is a um, mess mesh mesh stencil <laughs> it's kind of a tongue twister so you really don't mess up unless you get the ink outside the stencil like i generally tend to do but um and it's a bio maker studio they have a million different stencils and they are super super easy to use um again i'll put the i'll put a link in it in the comment afterwards yes cheryl look crisp right i didn't have to like with a regular stencil you generally have to um you generally have to like clear coat it first. So the paint doesn't go under the stencil. That's why I'm not a big stencil person, but I do love these because they are really easy to use. And like, there's a million different designs. Okay, so now we're gonna put this to the side, let it dry, and then we'll we'll revisit that either later tonight or this little guy. We can do so much with him, um, but sometimes you can, you could actually do a little bit too much. So. And I sometimes have a tendency to do that, and then I end up not liking it, and then I just throw it away. So I don't want to do it with this guy, because I could totally come in here, and I could paint everything and make it super cute. But I kind of like it, just the monotone of the, uh, the dark brown and the white. But what I do want to do is I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of this antique paste. This is in brass, and I'm going to line the edges of this real quick and then the fun is going to begin all right so what's nice about this is it can turn so i'm just giving it a little bit of
And when I'm looking at it online, it looks a little messy. It looks a little better in person. But that's what this is supposed to... Um, it's just supposed to get the edges. I'm going to do both sides. And if I don't like the way both edges look, then I'm going to just going to go ahead and do the whole entire um, ridge. You could put, this is just like gilding wax. You can put it on with your finger, a brush. But when you're putting it on the edge of something, it's really hard unless you're using your finger because you can really get the edge with your finger. So doing the outside edge gives it a little bit more balance. It's not meant to look perfect. If you wanted it perfect, you probably would need to tape a line. And that's not what I'm going for here. All right, so I can leave it just like this. Oops, let me flip them around. Or I can go back in and paint the whole thing. I like it like this. So I'm going to leave it like this. I am going to make a few parts a little bit wider <clears throat> just kind of evening the edges out a little bit here all right now look at how cute Another thing, what I might want to do is maybe I'll just do his, actually hers, um, the horns. What do you think? Should I do it? I know there won't be a lot of people on right now because, one, I didn't give you guys a lot of warning, and two, I don't have a lot of followers yet. So, <laughs> But if you are seeing this, I appreciate you being here. If you catch on the replay, I appreciate you watching the replay. Um, oh, I don't want to ruin it, but I think it'll add a little bit to it if I do it because, so I'm just going to do it. I'm going for it. I'm taking a brush. I'm going to use the exact same thing that I put here. And this is what I'm using on this one is the Antique Paste by Pentart. Don't do it. Oh, no. Francis, <laughs> don't do it yet. Well, I have to do it because... What I'm going to do is I'm going to pour resin on here. So I'm going to, because of the lip, I'm going to make it pour resin. And then we're going to put some cute flowers in there. So that's why I either need to do it now or don't do it. Uh, I just think, or maybe. Mm. <laughs> ah, let's see. Um, I'm, I'm, oh, I got some right there. Let me see if I can get that off real quick. I always keep baby wipes handy, the sensitive ones without the chemicals and stuff in it. Yep. So it's all right. She says, don't do it. Anybody else out there? Very little. Yeah. See, that's what I'm afraid of. I think if I put it too heavy, it might be too much. Then I also thought about maybe just doing the bow, but then I think I almost need to do it all then too. So you know what? Let's just scrap that idea. But what I am going to do though, I am, I am, I am going to take one of these. These are uh, flowers meant to put in resin. They're dried and flat. These are by a maker studio. So um, yesterday I put the link in the comments. I'll do that again. So if you're interested in any of the a maker studio, like this awesome, beautiful country girl, that's what the name of the stencil is. And then they also have these resin dried flowers, all different colors, and they sell resin and all that too. So, but let me get my scissors. They're, they're super cute. I did a bunch of keychains with the resin with these flowers and the white flowers are so pretty. So what I was thinking about doing was pouring my resin and putting one of the white flowers over here. So she was like, looks like she's holding a, you know, a real flower, like maybe this one, that one might not be big enough, but see how cute that would be. And so I thought if I put that, then maybe a little bit of the bronze, just because otherwise your eye is drawn to here. I don't know what I should do. <laughs> um, you know, maybe I'll do it very light. <laughs> hey, Michaela. All right. Um, we're having a discussion here if we should use some of the, see, I put the brass antique paste here. If we should put some here. And then with this flower, and then I'm going to pour resin on the, the top of this. 
That's true. I can always I can always get rid of it if I don't like it. All right. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to put that up there. I keep forgetting I can do that with my comments. All right. But I'm going to use I'm going to use Francesca's idea. I'm going to go just a very little. So and hopefully I don't smear it everywhere because I have a tendency to get a little messy. Okay, so I'm just using a regular old artist brush here, just a small one, and I'm going to just lightly <laughs> going to go on here and just kind of hopefully I'm making the right decision. Okay, all right, that's not too bad, right? Oh, maybe highlight the bow. Okay, that's a good idea too. I, you know what? <clears throat> if I was doing this off camera, I'd probably go ahead and hand paint it all. But I, that's a lot of work to be done on camera, so I won't do that. <laughs> but the stencil is reusable. Right after I got done with the live yesterday, I made sure I washed it really good, dried it upside down so the sticky adhesive part can be used again. So I'll definitely be reusing this stencil. But then again, I, if I ruin the stencil, I can always buy another one. They're fairly reasonable priced. All right. What's nice is this will show through the resin. And it's oil-based, so it should not have any problem with the resin. If it was water-based, I'd be a little bit more concerned. But there we go, what do you think? I think with the flower, it'll be cute. And there's bigger flowers I can put on there. <clears throat> I'll get I'll get another one out in a minute. We'll take a look, and you guys can help me decide which flower that I should use. Oh, <laughs> woo! <laughs> I like you, Jamie. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Oh, good. I'm glad, Nina. I'm glad you like it. All right. Now let's do the other one. And then, oh my gosh, I love this. My niece is getting married in, in May. I should probably make her one like this and put her new last name on it. I think she would just absolutely love this. I'm excited about the wedding. Oh, it's nice. If you were watching yesterday, I had issues with, um, because of Hurricane Ian, we had to get a new roof. And it's took it's taken a while to get it, but they finally finished up yesterday. It's all done. And um, so they're not working anymore. And ironically, it rained yesterday. <laughs> so um, my husband wanted me to go up in the attic and check the leak because he, he's not home right now or he, when it was rainy, he wasn't home. So I was like, yeah, no, <laughs> that's okay. I can barely reach the attic stairs and I'm like, it could just wait to next time it rains, you could peek up there. <laughs> okay. So do you think that's just enough with the flower and this? What do you think? What do you think? Now this stencil is just, this has got to be one of my most favorite stencils from a, make, a maker studio. And to be quite honest, I don't use them enough. They are super easy. If you saw me do it yesterday, you saw how easy and flawless they are to use. So I really, really, really need to use them more. And I'll probably use them a lot more um, in my demos just because they're so easy and they're so sticking cute. And now they have just so many of them. All right, I'm going to grab a different flower out, and then you guys are going to help me decide which flower that I need to use. So we have this little cute little, like, daisy-looking one. Okay, so there's that one. Or there is this one, which, ooh, I think. I like the other one with the yellow center. What do you guys think? Or 
I can I can always layer it. I know if you're commenting, it takes a fix next or like 30 seconds for me to get the message. Um. I think you can see it more when we layer it. What do you guys think? I think I, I think I'm gonna try to layer it. <laughs> try. Let's see what happens. Because sometimes with resin, it can be a little fussy. But thanks, Francesca. Good. We are on the same page. Okay. So, guys, I'm using resin. I always cringe when I see people that don't use gloves with resin. I'm getting older now, and I'm being more cautious on everything. And there is extreme warning on resin for a reason use gloves okay so i have this okay thanks layered um i have this is by pentart it um it leaked when it was shipping shipped to me so i just kept it like i just never cleaned it up because it's really hard I figured it doesn't matter what my bottles look like anyway. Never heat it up. I hear people that always try to heat the resin up with their their heat gun to so they can bend it. Just pull it out of your mold early and then bend it. Don't heat it. It emits poison. Okay, so we're going to mix some resin now. So I'm going to put this little guy out of the way for a minute. I know it's super cute and look at my mat I thought I'd have this cool little background this mat but you know what it just gets so dirty and it doesn't clean so ignore that <laughs> now I don't know exactly how much resin I need for to fill that so I'm just gonna probably make a little bit extra because I generally tend to under um, like not make enough so I want to make sure I make plenty and it's um, it's one to one ratio. So I have these little cups, um, but I just noticed that's pretty cool. On um, the sides of these, they have exactly 25, 50, 75, hundred milliliters. So you can also measure that way too, but I'm just going to use my cups. I'm going to try to contain my mess to this little solo plate. There's... Um, okay, so I'm just under 75 on that one. I'll do this one. Let's see. Make reborn dolls and have the bake in the pan. You eat. Oh, yeah, it's dangerous. And if it, if they didn't mean it, they would not put the warning on it. So definitely there is, if the warning is there for a reason. A little bit more. All right. Get my little stir stick. Red Solo cup. These are always come in handy. I don't normally like to pour with these, especially when you have to try to get an intricate little part. But since it's such a big, wide area, it pours really easy. So. Like normally I'll use like a little Dixie cup or something because see how you can get that nice little pour. I'm second guessing myself like that's not enough. Definitely want to make sure I make enough. I might add some more. I'm using, this is the clear resin so it's going to take a while to dry. It's not the quick set, the quick cast resin. Right. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be enough. I'm going to add some more. Like I said, I'd rather be careful than I've made that mistake before. <laughs> I do have a couple of um, IOD molds handy, so if I have extra resin, I'll just throw it in there. What's nice about the overnight resin, it doesn't take, it doesn't set as fast, so I have a little bit of time to actually get it into a mold. All right, let's pour these in. So I added a little bit more. All 
The one thing I'm hoping is once I set the flower, that as it's drying, it doesn't move. Okay, let's stir this up. And you want to stir for a little bit. You want to make sure it's good and mixed. Like with a quick set, you don't have to, st to stir quite as long. Because if you stir too long, it sets up on you. <laughs> And with the quick cast, you can always feel it getting warm. You know it's already starting to work. Like this one, you don't have that. With this one, though, you get the bubbles. But we'll use our heat gun and take care of any bubbles if it's a problem. Most of the time, they just go away. And you can also, at this stage, use your uh, alcohol inks. You can, you know, tint. I was thinking about that, but then I was like, my luck, it just won't look good over the Highland Cow. All right, let's hope that I have enough. So I'm gonna push this stuff out of the way. And bring my Highland Cow back over here. I think we need a name. <laughs> what should we call her? <laughs> All right. Um, where's my, let's just. I want to save just a tad because I want to have enough to stick over that flower. So here we go. I'm just going to spread it with my fingers. That's another reason why it's good to have the gloves on. Working with a lazy Susan is awesome because you just move the lazy Susan. <laughs> Just twist it and you can get to every part without too much trouble. Now it's very important that it dries on a level surface. One time I was doing a really big table and when I was spreading the resin, it was perfect. I had it on a level surface, it was looking pretty. And then I was like, oh, I better move it so it could sit overnight and dry. So. You know, in the morning, nobody will touch it just in case it's not cured all the way. Well, I moved it to an area that wasn't level, and I didn't know, but I didn't notice it, and I didn't think about it till too late. And guess what? I came in, and the table, all the resin had pulled up, and it was awful. Then I tried to pour more resin on top to fix it, and yeah, you know, it just didn't go, didn't go very well. All right. Oh my goodness, y'all. What do you think? I love it. Sassafras. I love it. <laughs> Lulu Bell, Daisy. Oh my gosh, those are all awesome. All right, let's start with our first flower. I'm not sure we're going to be able to... I'm not sure how deep the resin is for us to layer, but we're going to give it a shot. I'm going to stick the first one in. And it does blend, but I like that the colors that we that we're using because they're kind of um, like all in the same family. I love that. All right, here's this one. This is going to stick up a little, but we're going to get some pour a little bit of resin on top. Oh, oh my goodness, ah. Michaela, where did you go? There we go, pour some of that on top. Go around, I still had some. The hardest part is gonna be letting, waiting for this to dry overnight. This is, I really like the way it turned out. Even though the um, antique paste is not perfect, it fits this piece. And if I decide that I don't like it, I can always go ahead and just make that solid. But for right now, I really am loving it. And for the final step, I used the Chameleon Varnish Gold and just around the rim so it would give it some glitter and some shine.